That is through PayPal at SNBC1902 at hotmail.com. You can give through Givelify, which is an app that you can download on your electronic device or your cell phone. It's called Givelify. You can find us at Second Missionary Baptist Church. You can give through Cash App, which is another app that you can download on your electronic device or your cell phone. And you can give through dollar sign SNBC1902 at Hotmail, excuse me, at 1902. Or you can give through your regular way of giving by mailing your church, by mailing your tithe and offering to the church at 1000 Housing Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. However you choose to give, we pray that you take advantage of these platforms that have been made available to you. Amen. Any blessed people in the house on today? Any blessed people in the house know that you have given to God and God has graciously given back to you? Amen. We thank you for your tithe and offering, and we pray that you will continue to support your church through your tithe and offering. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand to recite our vision statement on today. Be located on the screens behind me, the vision statement here at our church. We recite it every Sunday. We want to recite it with clarity and with conviction this morning. So let us now begin to recite our vision statement. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. Come on, Second Baptist. I see compassionate work in the lives of people. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together, we see transformation, and let it start with me. Put your hands together for our vision statement. Amen. Amen. The word of God comes from Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. Reading from the King James Version. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Come before his presence with what? Singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. The word of God for the people of God and God's people say it. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name above all the earth. We magnify you. We adore you. We love on you on today, O oh God. We thank you for another day, a Mother's Day that you have created where we are celebrating our, our earthly mothers on today. And God, for those whose mothers have transitioned on, we pray that their memories and legacy live on through us. God, we are thankful for the gift of mothers. We are thankful for the gift of this day, a day that we have never seen before and a day we'll never see again. God, since you have graciously decided to allow us to be in your presence at this church, God, we have made a conscious decision to worship you in spirit and in truth today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us on today. Spirit of the almighty God, flow through our hearts and our minds and give us a spirit of worship. God, we exchange our cloaks of heaviness and burden for a spirit of praise. God, we pray right now for Sister Cherie and her family. God, that you will comfort and console her and her family right now. Let them know, God, that you are still the God of all comfort and all mercy. God, wrap your loving arms of protection around their family and all of the families who might be suffering from loss on today. God, we pray for all those who are suffering from physical illness to remind them that you are still a healer, that you can still speak 
and it's done. And you can command and it stands fast. God, right now, we pray right now for our shepherd that you would infuse him with preaching power. That he might preach and teach your word with conviction and clarity. God, touch this praise team. Allow them to sing from the depths of their hearts. God, what has been rehearsed in private, let them be proclaimed in public. Touch the hands of the musicians. Allow them to play to your glory. And God, allow us to glorify you with the first fruits of our lips. God, we thank you today for what will transpire in this setting. God, we know our miracle is right before us. We know our deliverance is nigh. So God, we walk in victory. We walk in deliverance. We walk in prosperity. We know those things that you have spoken into our lives. We receive right now in the name of Jesus. So God, allow your presence, allow your Shekinah glory to permeate this place. God, move, transform, inspire, illuminate. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, you the glory, you the honor. As we close this prayer, collectively, we repeat the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Put your hands together and I mean put your hands together for our Lord and Savior as we go higher in our praise and worship. Amen.
Jesus, for all you've done for us. We worship your holy name.
Genesis chapter 12, verse 7 says, And the Lord appeared unto Abram, Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, where he appeared unto him. Abram, when God had called him to leave his kindred and his land, and to go to that place where he will show, the Bible says, while in transition, he worshiped. God is saying to us through this ministry of music that while we are going through our transitions in life, we should put on a garment of worship. Because where we are is not better than where God has taken us. If you can worship God in your situation right now you can learn to thank him from where he's taking you we worship God on today for he is worthy of all our praise listen I know it's painful right now I know it seems uncertain I know it seems as if sometimes God doesn't even care but I challenge you on today to worship, to love him, to honor him, to obey him. Let's give God praise on today. Amen. This ministry of music reminded us also that God is still able to make ways out of no ways. Do I have a witness? To know that God still can make a way out of no way. He did it for the children of Israel. He did it for Daniel. He did it for those three Hebrew boys. And he'll do it for you. Our God specializes in those things that seem impossible. Amen. Amen. We are truly thankful for this ministry of music. And I have learned to come to appreciate that music is more than a melody. It's a ministry. We are made the richer and the better. If we listen to the lyrics of the song and allow those lyrics to take root in our lives and to minister to our hurt, our uncertainty, our pain and our predicament. If we just focus on God and concentrate on him, he will minister to your heart through this music, music of ministry. And for the most important part of the service, is the word of God being preached and taught. We are truly thankful for a shepherd who preaches and teaches and lives the word of God. The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't grow in your faith if you don't take heed to God's word. And I don't know about you, but I am eager and anxious to hear what God has given to Pastor Barlow to give to us. Because I know there is a word from the Lord, specifically tailor-made for my situation and my life. Do I have a witness on today? That you're glad, that you know you're glad. That you're good and glad. That God still speaks through his servants. Let us receive our bishop as he comes to break unto us the bread of life. Amen. Let the church say amen. I agree that we are appreciative and 
so blessed to have a praise team that give their life uh, to the Lord and they their first purpose is to worship our Lord and Savior through the songs that they sing and I thank them for their devotion first of all to God and second to Second Missionary Baptist Church I want to thank God for all of you, especially our musician, our sound man, he has more gadgets now to sort of watch over. And again, we are thankful for the donation uh, that was made possible, uh, that he has more gadgets to watch over. Uh, I have a, a pair of mic, you even have one. And so, uh, so I thank God for him. Again, I want to wish all of our mothers uh, a very happy Mother's Day. Those who are listening to us by Facebook and those who listen to us by uh, Zoom. Now, we may have little kinks in this thing, and I'm seeing it now. Uh, so we, when you get new uh, instrumentation, you have to work out the little kinks in it. And so this is our first time to trying to use this lapel mic. I want you to pray with me and pray for me. God has put a, a word in my spirit. I want you to take time to read it yourself when you get back home and just see how the Lord speaks to you. I often say that God does not give all the insight into his word to one person. The Holy Spirit is able to give you insight in, into his word. I'm happy to see um, Sister Francine with us this morning. Amen. 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 I have not seen her in some time. Good to see her in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen on this Mother's Day. I ask you to pray with me and pray for me. I got a little old and started suffering with sinus. I found a medication, but if I take it at night, it makes me drowsy so I can't get up in the morning. And I don't eat breakfast sometime in the morning, so I'm afraid to take it in the morning uh, because one of my worst sickness was taking medication on an empty stomach. I don't know if any of you have had that type of sickness. That's one of the worst sickness that you can have is taking medication on an empty stomach. So I'm praying that I can get through this sermon today without having too much problem with my uh, sadness, amen. Let us pray. Father God, I come now in the precious name of Jesus of Christ. Come Lord to say thank you again for all that you do. Bless us in a way that only you can. Strengthen us. Keep us, O oh Lord, close to you. And Father, I pray now that you allow me to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Allow me, O oh Lord, to claim a message today that makes sense to your people, but that give glory to you. Speak to your servants now. Speak to your servant now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to lift a subject today, the anguish of womanhood. On this Mother's Day, the anguish of motherhood. It's a story that comes from the Old Testament. The character today is a very familiar character, a lady by the name of Hannah. And as I was thinking about the subject, I thought to myself that when we look at scripture, 
two of the most famous mother of scripture suffered not because of being a mother at the time, but a woman at the time. Mary, her anguish was the fact that she was having a child and was not married. Hannah, who is a wife, she is suffering because she does not have a child and wants a child. So I pray this message today will bless you the anguish, the pain, the suffering of womanhood. Because before you can be a mother, you have to be a woman. I need to say it again. Before you can be a mother, you have to be a woman. The text that I'm going to share with you today affords me the opportunity to look at God's intent for man. Because when God created man, he created man, and he was able to make the statement that everything I created is good and very good. But after the fall of man, God regretted what he had created. And so, so many times, we who live in this era forget that God had a perfect will before his permissive will. And what you and I often experience today is not so much God's perfect will, his intent, but that which he allows to be. Because the story today is going to talk about a man who has two wives. And I thought if I was preaching this on a men's day sermon, a man's day, I might say a father there, I might say trying to love two. It's a difficult thing. And since it's in the text that this man has two wives, it forced me to look back before the fall and say to men, my brothers, that God never intended for you to have two wives because when he put Adam to sleep he didn't bring Adam Eve and Betty I thought I, I'd share that with you before you take the text out of context so allow me to read the scripture in 1 Samuel verse 1 verse 2 through 8 and this is a contemporary English version reading. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Peniah. Although Peniah had children, Hannah did not have any. Once a year, Elkanah traveled from his hometown to Shiloh, yeah. where he worshiped the Lord of powerful and offer sacrifices. Eli was the Lord priest there, and his two sons, Harphan and Peniah, served with him as priests. Whenever Elkanah offered a sacrifice, he gave some of the meat to Peniah and some to each of her sons and daughters. But he gave Hannah even more 
because he loved Hannah very much. Even though the Lord had kept her from having children of her own. Peniah liked to make Hannah feel miserable about not having any children, especially when the family went to the house of the Lord each year. One day, Elkanah was there offering a sacrifice. When Hannah began crying and refused to eat. So Elkanah asked Hannah, why are you crying? Why won't you eat? Why do you feel so bad? Don't I make, don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? Thus read verse one through eight. Verse 10 and 11 deals with Hannah response to the situation. I want us to look at this text today as I will attempt to give you four principles that comes from this thought, the anguish of womanhood. The first thing that I want to share with you today is that sometimes God will put you in a position to see if you want, to see if you know rather why you want what you say you want. I need to say that again. Let me, let me, let me say it again. Sometime, God will put you in a position to see if you know why you want what you say you want. Because in verse 5, it is God who has stopped Hannah from having children. Can I suggest to you today that sometime that the reason your breakthrough has not come through is because God has delayed it to see if you really know why you want what you say you want. And I'm talking about it in the house today. Because a whole lot of folks want something, but they don't really know why they want it. Can I help somebody? I, I, I was sitting in the barber shop this week. And as I sat in the chair, I shared with my barber that I'd been married 48 long years. The whole shop got quiet. The person in front of me asked me, came back and sit down. And said, man, how do you stay alone? How do you stay married 48 years? I simply told him, joking, you got to learn how to keep your focus and look straight ahead. But the thing that really came to me is this, that sometimes people ask for things that they really don't know why they want what they ask for. Can I help somebody today? Maybe the reason that people break up sometimes is because you asked for something yeah, yeah. that you really didn't know why you wanted what you asked for. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help somebody here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's always going to be misery in your life yeah. Yeah. when you ask for things that when you get it, you don't know how to handle it. And I'm talking to somebody here today. Yeah. Because a whole lot of folks yeah. get what they ask for but when they get it, they don't know how to handle it. And so maybe God has not allowed your breakthrough. Maybe he's put it on a delay because you're asking for something, and right now he, don't, he knows that you don't know how to handle it. Yeah, so sometimes God will put you in a position 
to see if you know why you want what you say you want. Oh yeah, that's good preaching, amen. That's good preaching to me, but I feel like shouting today. Yeah, I, 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 can, I, can, I, can, I can recall as a young pastor, a young preacher, I, I wanted to help the homeless, the people under the bridges. And one day I was talking and just running my mouth and a senior pastor said, young pastor, make it sense. But let me check it out and see what the young pastor is really talking about is needed. He came back and, and he said, what the young pastor is asking for has already been taken care of. But God was not through with me because I was asking to do something that I really didn't know what I was asking to do. And about a year later, God allowed me, i never forget, to be on, 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 on Harriman Street, sitting in the church, at Methodist Church over there, and we were having a Christmas lunch. And a homeless lady come off the street, sat beside me with her pail, and in her pail she had food. And God knows why she showed the set beside me, but she started taking the food and putting it in the pail, and it made me sick. And some said, you asked for something that you really didn't know why you asked for it. Am I making sense to anybody? If anybody ever, God ever put you in a position to allow you to discover that what you asked for, you didn't know what you really were asking for. So let me just share it again. Sometimes God will put you in a position to see if you know if you know why you want what you say you want. Second thing this text says to me, I want to just share it with you. It's also in verse 5. Verse 5 says, but he gave Hannah even more. What I saw was human kindness cannot remove every sorrow. Am I talking to somebody here today? Have you ever had a sorrow? that hurt you so bad that human kindness couldn't take away the pain. Sometimes human kindness cannot take away sorrow. Here, Elkanah is, is trying to show his love and his devotion for Hannah. Look at him. He, he gives her more than he gives Peniah and all of her children. And yet Hannah is still crying. Yeah, I saw in the text that sometimes human kindness cannot remove every sorrow. But look at the text. This is what really blew my mind. This is what really blew my mind. It seemed that Peniah waited till she went to the house of God. To stick it to her sister. Oh, help me hold it. Oh, help me hold it. it, it it's in the text. It's in the text. Read the text. She, she waited. She, 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 she planned it. Every year how I'm going to stick it to her. And I thought I'd just tell somebody today that, that stopped up in this sanctuary that demonic behavior will show up in the house of God to pull the scalp off of your wound. Oh, help me. If I'm talking to somebody, if anybody ever spirit, you, they, they, you, they knew you were going through it. They didn't bother you while you were at home. But they waited till you walked in this house of God, sat right down beside them, and they brought it up in your face. The money here will show up in the house of God. Amen. I'm, I'm just trying to help somebody. That's why we need good airships. Help me, Holy Ghost. You don't set everybody beside everybody. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Because demonic behavior will show up in the house of God to pull the scap off of your wound. Amen. You're trying to get over a bad memory that you don't want to think about anymore. You're trying to evade it. But there's always somebody who won't let you forget what you did on yesterday. I'm talking to somebody. 
And they start, they start talking about, I remember when, amen. If I'm talking to anybody today, amen, you're moving on from that situation. You are trying to belly yourself from that situation. And they'll throw it back up in your face and say, I remember when. I thought I'd just share with somebody that the money havers would show up in God's house to pull the scamp off of your womb. Well, my sisters and my brothers, the subject was the anguish, the suffering, the acute pain of womanhood. As I stand here today, I realize that this pandemic has caused women to suffer more than anybody else. I heard the other day that out of the four million women Amen. That were in the workplace, only two million have gone back to work. When you look at the poverty rate in America, you'll find that the poverty rate is greatest among single mothers. The anguish and the suffering seem to be more among women. Mothers suffer more when their children go astray than daddies on the average. There seems to be an anguish and a suffering among women and among mothers. But one of the things I saw in the text, in verse 10 and verse 11, that the Bible says that when the sacrifice was over, and the meal was finished. The Hannah got up and went in to prayer. In other words, she left her situation and took her brokenness to God. And I want to tell somebody as I get ready to come to a close, God can heal. God can mend a broken heart. Do I have a witness here today? And I'm talking to anybody here today. Your heart was shattered, torn up in tatters, but you decided to have a little talk with the Lord. And I'm talking to anybody here today. And I'm talking to anybody to know that God can make a way out of no way. It's in the story. The Bible says that after Hannah got through praying to God, Elijah tell her, go on home. And the end of the record that God gave her son. I'm trying to help somebody here today. That with sadness come into your heart. Don't do as Hannah did. She took it to her husband first. But take your burdens to the Lord. Do I have a witness here today? And when you take your burdens to the Lord, that God is able to work it out. Do I have a witness here today that say you took your trials to the Lord, you took your hurts to the Lord, and God turned your sadness into joy? Do I have a witness here today? You ought to say, yeah, won't God do it? I'm getting ready to leave you, Second Baptist, but I've learned a long time ago when I'm down that I know a God that still sits high that looks down and picks you up anybody ever been picked up anybody ever been turned around you ought to say yeah glory 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 uh, to his name don't worry God got this thing say glory glory happy mother day mothers take your burdens uh, to the Lord God God my God my God we'll work it out he worked it out. 
He worked it out for Hannah, and he'll work it out for you. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough. That's enough. Open the door to church. How many of you know that the Lord can mend your broken heart? That was good for a group of people who really don't believe but just wanted to participate. I said, how many of you truly believe <laughs> that the Lord can mend your broken heart? This is the opportunity for you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Maybe you might be a mother sitting here on today trying to find your way through this thing called life and you've looked for love in all the wrong places. And God is saying on you today, I have loved you with an unconditional love. I can love you like no other. Give your life to me. Give me those broken pieces that seemingly you can't put back together and I'll make sense out of nonsense. If you would stand all over this place as we extend to you this invitation of Christian discipleship and we want to ask you the question, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Not what you heard about him, not do your mama, your dad, or your grandma, but do you know him? As the choir sings, do you know Jesus? When the song is over? When the song is over. When the music stops? When the music stops. Do you know? Do you know Jesus? Does he live? Does he live in your heart? When your life is troubled? Jesus wants. Jesus still wants to be a part. The question that I ask you, do you know? Do you know Jesus? Does he live? Does he live in your heart? Do you believe? Do you believe that he will come? Do you believe he died? Do you believe that he died? Do you believe that he can forgive your sins? Do you believe he can reach you right where you are? Right where you are? Right where you are. Do you know? Do you know Jesus? Does he live? Does he live in your heart? Oh, do you know Jesus? Does he live? Does he live in your heart? Put your hands together for the word of God on today. God our Father, we pray that you pour back into Pastor Barlow and he has poured out into us. Restore him, rejuvenate him, replenish him. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Amen. Before we, before we dismiss, uh, the Lord has put it on my heart. Uh, to pray for uh, Sister Cherie and her family. Um, I'm not wanting to put anybody on the spot, but I want to be obedient for what God is leading me to do on today. So, Sister Cherie and your family, if you don't mind, come up to the altar this morning. We want to pray for you. It's so important that we pray for each other, y'all. James says that the effectual and the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Y'all just come on up at the altar. If y'all don't mind just holding hands with each other as a family. 
This pandemic won't stop us from praying and loving on each other. Family, we want you to know that God loves you. And there is no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And right now, even in this situation where you are angry, upset, frustrated, confused, hurt, we want you to know that God's love can sustain you in this difficult time of your life. Church family, if you would extend your hand toward this family as we pray for this family, as we intercede for this family. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the only one that can comfort you are the only one that can console. God, we all know what it's like to lose things and people that we love. And so, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would fill them with your love. Put your arms of loving protection around them. God, where there might be division trying to take place in this family, I pray in the name of Jesus that you unite them and make them stronger. God, the link that was taken, God, we pray that you replace it with your presence and with your power. Holy Spirit, right now, guide this family. Restore this family. Encourage this family. And God, late in the midnight hour when they are crying themselves to sleep and don't know where to go or who to turn to, remind them that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Remind them that they can look to the hills from which cometh their help, realizing all their help comes from you. God, we can lift up our heads, O ye gates, and we can keep our heads, ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. So the King of glory, shall come in God right now touch move encourage restore and unite in the name of Jesus we pray let all God's people say together amen amen we love you family we love you keep your hand in the Lord's hand amen if you would stand as we prepare now for the benediction. Amen. I think the, the youth minister has something for mothers. Amen. Amen. For all our mothers. You, you can take your seat just a minute. I, I, uh, we usually give the mothers something on Mother's Day. We need to bear with Cherie. Uh, Cherie used to do this. Let's, let's bear with her. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. If I can ask uh, some of the choir member, praise team to work with Cherie right now, uh, if I can get you, uh, Miss Barlow, I think they're doing something for the mothers. She needs some help right now. Okay, Liv, you, Liv uh, you've been vast. You might move your mask so we can hear you. Oh, 
Okay, all the children will come and get something and present to your mother. Amen. And those who do not have children, we'll get you something. We'll, we'll make it work. Just be patient with us for a minute. This is something they usually like doing for the mothers, youth ministry. Amen. So, amen. We want to let you know that we thank God for all our mothers. One thing that the pandemic has done to us that we're not been, we don't have staff in place like we used to. So just be be patient, Amen. We'll make sure every mother get get something. Miss Barlow, Fra Francine, get Francine. I want to thank God for the strength that God has given Cherie to be here. Amen. The strength that he's given her to be here. Thank God for Ella Gooch for the prayer for the family. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you again. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all your mothers. May God bless you. May God keep all our mothers. Uh, Ella Goose will come now and get us, give us our benediction. Amen. Amen. If you would mind to stand as we prepare for the benediction. Listen, we want to say a couple of things. First thing is we are preparing to have Vacation Bible School this year at Second Missionary Baptist Church. I am asking for you all that are interested in volunteering your time, volunteering your time uh, to please see me. Um, also, I would need to briefly see the deacons of our church for about two minutes of your time to run some things by you in regards to VBS and for you all that have children we pray that you connect your children and reconnect them back to the church so they can partake in the different ministries that we have up and coming for uh, our youth and children specifically with VBS amen amen listen for you all that don't know, the benediction arguably outside of the word of God is the most important part of the service. It's the part of the service where you receive the blessing uh, from God as you leave his presence in this place. And so we have intentionally prepared to modify the benediction and we pray that you remain standing as we are fully completed with the benediction. I will give the benediction. The choir will sing the benediction and we'll exit together. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.
make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Are fully revealed in Jesus Christ. Yes. Be yours this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and return in love. God bless you. Amen.